Next, we will study two special random variables and then derive their corresponding chain of bounds. So the two special random variables are as follows. The first one is the sum of n independent random variables such that the value of each of these random variables could either be plus 1 or minus 1 with equal probability. So this is somehow like the sum of independence indicators, except that for indicators, the value could either be plus 1 or 0, but here the value could be either plus 1 or minus 1. So we will see that this random variable will be quite related to something that we have already studied. Now the other one is the binomial random variable with parameter n and then 0 0.5. So this is actually a special case of the sum of independent Poisson trials so that we set all of the probability of the indicators to be the same, 0 0.5. Okay, so let's see what are the channel of bounds for these special random variables that we can obtain. Now for the first one, we are looking at the sum of independent plus or minus 1 random variables. So here we assume that we have x1, x2, xn, such that for each of these xj, the probability that xj is equal to plus 1 and the probability of xj is equal to minus 1 are both the same, equal to 0 0.5. Now we claim the following result. So x is the sum of these independent random variables. So we claim this result. For any r greater than 0, the chance that x is greater than or equal to r will be less than or equal to e to the power minus r squared divided by 2n. So don't worry about this one. So you can always see what it is when you when you make use of this, this result. Okay, but, but let's see how we can derive this. So first of all, we let mxjt to be the moment generating function of xj, and we let mxt to be the moment generating function for x. Now because x is the sum of the random variables xj's, and then these xj's are independent, so the moment generating function mxt can be expressed as the product of the individual moment generating functions of this xj. Now for xj, the moment generating function will be equal to what? So if you recall, the moment generating function will be the expected value of e to the power txj. So with probability 0 0.5, the value of xj is equal to plus 1. So in that case, e to the power t x j will be e to the power t. So with 0 0.5 chance, we get the value e to the power t. And similarly, with 0 0.5 chance, we will get the value e to the power minus t. So this bracket sign is the moment generating function of x j. And because all of these x1, x2 up to xn, they are identical. So in that case, all of them have the same moment generating function, like this. Now for this one, we can use Taylor's expansion of e to the power t, so that 0 0.5 e to the power t plus 0 0.5 e to the power minus t can be converted into the summation of infinite number of terms. Each term is of the form t to the power 2k divided by 2k factorial. And now, because t to the power 2k divided by 2k factorial is smaller than or equal to t squared over 2 to the power k divided by k factorial, you can compare term by term that this is true. So in that case, we can see that this summation is less than or equal to this summation. And finally, this summation part Will be, will be what? Will be the Taylor's expansion of e to the power t squared over 2. So in that case, the product of 
n of these terms, so each of them is e to the power t squared over 2, we will now get this one to be e to the power n times t squared over 2, because they are n of the values of j that we are looking at. So we will use algebra so that we can get this result. Now notice that this is the only part that we are making approximations. Okay, we now have the moment generating function for x, so we are ready to get the channel of bounds. Okay, so for any t greater than 0, the probability that x is greater than or equal to r will be less than or equal to the moment generating function divided by e to the power t r. And the moment generating function itself is smaller than or equal to this term. So in that case, probability of x greater than or equal to r will be less than or equal to e to the power nt squared over 2, this term, divided by e to the power tr. Now, this result holds for any t. So as usual, we want to find out what is the best t so that the right-hand side part can be minimized. By setting t is equal to r over n, then we get the result in the previous page. So we will get this result. This is the result obtained by setting t to be equal to r over n. Okay, so we are done. And notice that for this x to be the sum of these plus or minus one random variable, the expected value of x is actually equal to zero. So what does that mean? It means that the distribution for x is actually symmetric. So if we can claim that the probability of x greater than or equal to r is less than or equal to this one, then we can as well claim that the probability of x less than or equal to minus r is also bounded by the same term, e to the power minus r squared divided by 2n. This is the same term, so we can obtain this by symmetry. So combining the two results, we will have the probability that the absolute value of x is greater than or equal to r will be less than or equal to two copies of e to the power minus r squared over 2n. Okay, so this is about the sum of independent plus or minus one random variables. Okay, now let us move on to the next special case. So we are going to study the binomial random variable with parameter n and 0 0.5. Let us focus on the right tail first. This time, let's say y is a binomial random variable with parameter n and 0 0.5, so that the mean value mu of this y will be equal to n over 2. Then we have two bounds. Okay, the first one is for any a, the chance that y is greater than or equal to mu plus a will be less than or equal to e to the power minus 2a squared over n. And for any, the second bound, for any delta greater than 0, the chance that y is greater than or equal to 1 plus delta times mu will be less than or equal to e to the power minus mu delta square. Now notice, if you notice that this is, this is a binomial random variable, right? So this is like a special case for the sum of Poisson trials. And for sum of Poisson trials, we get a weaker bound. So we get e to the power minus mu delta square over 3. And then it works only when delta is between 0 and 1. And here it is un unrestricted. So for any delta, we get a much better bound as well. So, so this is why if we know more information uh, of, a, of a random variable, we will be able to get a tighter bound. So this is more special than the general sum of independent Poisson trials. Okay, so let's see how we can derive the corresponding bounds. Okay, so for the first one, okay, so for the first one, we are going to sum, so y, what is y? y is the sum of independent indicators, right? And here, to get the first bound, First of all, we let x1, x2 up to xn to be n independent random variables such that the chance for each one uh, to, to be equal to plus 1 or minus 1 has the same chance. It is equal to 0 0.5. This is exactly what we have studied just before. 
and now we have this x1, x2 up to xn, and then we want to associate these random variables with y1, y2 up to yn. And then y1, y2 up to yn, each of these yj, we will simply set it to be xj plus 1, this value, divided by 2. So what does that mean? It means that each of these yi's will be independent of each other because they are based on independent things. And then each of these values is going to be either 1. Yeah, when xj is equal to 1, then this xj plus 1 over 2 will be equal to 1. Or when xj is equal to minus 1, xj plus 1 over 2 will be 0. So in that case, the value of yj will be equal to 1 or 0, each with the same probability 0 0.5. So what does that mean? So yj will be an indicator such that it is successful with probability 0 0.5. Because of this, y is a binomial random variable with parameter n 0 0.5, so can be expressed as the sum of y1, y2 up to yn. Okay. Now the purpose of doing so here is that we want to derive the current churn of bounds for bin n 0 0.5 based on the previous result. So we are now trying to associate the two random variables. So so as so now we let x to be equal to the sum of x1, x2 up to xn, and then y is equal to the sum of y1, y2 up to yn. But on the other hand, yj is equal to xj plus 1 divided by 2. So by doing some substitution, we will find out that y itself can be expressed as x divided by 2 plus n over 2. So because n over 2 is the mean value of y, so it is equal to x over 2 plus mu. So y is always equal to x over 2 plus mu. And for the first bound, so this is the first bound that we want to find out, what is the chance that y is greater than or equal to mu plus a? So let's examine what it means. So when y is greater than or equal to mu plus a, then this happens if and only if x over 2 plus mu is greater than or equal to mu plus a, and it happens if and only if x is greater than or equal to 2a. So the probability of y greater than or equal to mu plus a will be the same as the probability that x is greater than or equal to 2a. Now, x is a random variable, a sum of independent plus 1 minus 1 random variable that we have studied. So we can apply the churn of bounds that we know for this one, so that we will obtain the corresponding bound of this one as a result. So this is how we obtain our first bound. Okay, now to get the second bound, we just simply set a to be delta mu in our first bound. So our first bound concerns about y greater than or equal to mu plus a. By setting a to be delta mu, then we will have probability of y greater than or equal to 1 plus delta times mu is equal to the probability of y greater than or equal to mu plus a. And mu plus a, we just have this e to the power minus 2a squared over n, and then now we substitute this a as delta mu. So after doing some cancellation, we will find that this can be simplified as e to the power minus mu delta square. So this is how we can obtain our second bound based on our first bound. And finally, let us go back to talk about what is the left tail for this churn of bounds for bin n 0 0.5. Now because bin n 0 0.5 is symmetric around the, the, the mean value, so in that case, immediately we can obtain the probability of y less than or equal to mu minus a will be the same bound as the probability of y greater than or equal to mu plus a. So we get the same bound. And similarly, for any delta, probability of y smaller than or equal to 1 minus delta times mu will be 
equal to the probability of y greater than or equal to 1 plus delta times mu. And so we get the same bound. So, so we get the corresponding channel of bounds for the left tail of this binomial random variable. Okay, so that's the end of the introduction of these two special random variables.